The content you're about to enjoy comes from the archives of The Best You. We're devoted to the very best in personal development, with a platform and resources dedicated to inspiring and changing people's lives. At The Best You, we work with the world's leading writers and trainers on the evolution of the self and people whose journeys have been affected by their work and words. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co. Great. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. It's Bernardo Moya, founder of The Best You. And thank you and welcome to the series of webinars that I call Inspiring People uh, Interviews. Um, it's a webinar, it's a podcast, and it's uh, an opportunity for me to connect with uh, amazing individuals that um, you know either um, I follow or people that are speaking, exhibiting at the expos or have been involved in some of the amazing things that we do. So I'm delighted to, to interview today Colleen, who's going to be sharing some great ideas with us uh, today and at the Expo. And I'm going to do a very quick introduction. I'm going to ask her to give, a, give us kind of like the, the street and short version of, of what she does. So Colleen uh, Biggs uh, strives to reach all women through influence to encourage the understanding that in order to be, to have, and to do anything in life that you desire, you must first gain clarity. That's very good advice. Kalina survived an early childhood of chaos, loss, and abuse, and it was through these trials that she gained the clarity to understand the magnitude of loving others unconditionally and realizing the power of community. Uh, she is an inspiration to others by helping them realize their worth, gain clarity, and show up. Uh, she believes that life is about thriving and not simply surviving. So I love your bio, Colleen. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm like thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, look, I normally like starting. So uh, with kind of very basic progression, tell us who you are in your words, uh, what you do and, and how you, you help people. Well, I think you did a fabulous entrance there uh, of saying who I am. I think you covered it all soup to nuts, really. But, um, you know, I'm going to tell you, I'm just a regular woman, just like any other woman. Uh, there's nothing super special about me other than I know that I'm a child of God and I know that I am on this earth for a specific purpose, um, as all of us are, to lean into what it is that we're skilled at and what it is that we know is in our heart that we need to do um, to fulfill our place here on earth. And for me, it's about showing up. So I hold space for women to feel confident and comfortable without judgment for them to be able to just show up and be themselves. And that's genuinely one of the most difficult things for any human to do um, is to be themselves authentically all the time in every situation uh, because society and culture teaches us that we need to hide uh, behind some imagination of what the society and culture feels we need to be in that situation or in that day. And um, I specifically work with women, not like I have anything against men. I have several sons and a husband, <laughs> but I work with women because that's just who I feel the most comfortable with. And um, they feel very comfortable with me as well. So, well, yeah. Let me, let, let me ask you, because there's, there's some key words uh, in, in, in your bio which I'm very passionate about, and, and, and you, you also mentioned the word purpose. First of all, um, how I, th I, think, I think that a lot of people do struggle in, in, in understanding what clarity means. Uh, I think a lot of people struggle with the clarity of, of what is my purpose here? You know, well, what am I intended here to do? And I, and I think the reason is, is because we learn a limited amount of things in school. And I mean a limited amount of things that help you really in life, okay? Because now I can do anything on Google and I can just literally use my calculator on my phone and <laughs> photograph my life and that's it. But I, I think I think a lot of people, you know, finish school and then all of a sudden they got to go and find a job and, and, and then that's it. They're, they're, they're on this rat race of, okay, I've, I've, now I've got to pay the bills and I've got to raise a family. How... How easy or how difficult is it? And why do people struggle in, in finding clarity in, in what they should or could do in life? 
Um, well, in my experience and with the thousands of people that I've worked with over time, you know, I was in corporate America for many, many years and coached a lot of CEOs in that, in, in that uh, space and industry as well. And I have to say, Bernardo, the, the one thing that people tend to struggle with gaining clarity is accepting their past. So <clears throat> really accepting and understanding, and I mean accepting not just saying I am who I am. Um, I, you mentioned, you know, I had some chaos and loss. And when I mentioned some of the experiences that I've been through and the struggles in my life, people look at me uh, with a different look on their face, almost feeling sorry for me. Um, and I don't feel sorry for myself. I know that I had to go through every single thing in my life, whether it was chosen for me as a child or I chose to do it to another person whether it be infidelity in a marriage, whether it be maybe I wasn't the best mom that day, whatever it is, I had to accept all of the things that happened to me and that I did to other people, forgive myself, apologize to the other person and move on and realize that that does not define who and what I do for the rest of my life. It's my story and it's my past, but everything needed to happen exactly the way it did for me to be on the path I am today. And I wouldn't be the person I am today without um, all of the grit and the sand that was around me that molded me and, you know, into this perfect, I guess you could say, you know, there's this pearl inside the oyster, right? So I, I, it, it's something beautiful comes out of a lot of that chaos and loss that happens in people's lives. And they don't really accept who they are and accept the things that they've done because they want to push it into a closet and they want to hide it and not really reveal who they are. So by revealing yourself and having clarity, you have to accept and like you. And a lot of people don't spend too much time with themselves quietly or look in the mirror and just really like themselves. And so if you don't like yourself, change something about it. Change who you are to like who you are and do something about it. Because if you don't give yourself permission to do it, who is going to? Nobody. It is said that we live in a world our questions create. And it's true. Those that have succeeded in life, those that stand out, those that have made a difference, those that are inventing, those that are exploring, pushing the boundaries of reality are based on those that have asked themselves empowering questions. In my new book, The Question, Find Your True Purpose, I help you find your true purpose, find your legacy. For more information, go to www.thequestion.co. If you're interested in working with me, contributing to the magazine, Maybe speaking at any of our many events around the world, partnering or licensing The Best You, go to www.thebestyou.co. Well, I think the challenge is that there's obviously different types of people, but I believe that a lot of people do tend to live in the past as far as, hey, this happened to me in the past and I'm a victim and my life is terrible and they keep continue. Other people are solution-driven. You know, they've left whatever those challenges were are, and, and they're looking at where they're going and, and, and what their objective is in life. Um, but I suppose it's down to thinking, as you said, either, you know, people understanding uh, how to think and, 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 and what to focus on. So how, in your opinion, can we help people to perform, to, 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 okay, understanding and appreciating and accepting what's happened is fine, but how do I now go and find a purpose? How can I be clear about what I want? What advice would you give someone? The advice I give people when I'm working with them and clients and women, um, I also have a podcast on the radio and <clears throat> so women that I talk to and interview and work with, one of the biggest pieces of advice is, you don't have to find your purpose. Like it's not outside of yourself. It's really tapping into the answers that we have inside of us. So anyone who hires a coach or goes to a therapist, the answers are generally all already within us. It's just a matter of having somebody from the outside show us a different perspective and giving us the guidance to understand how to tap in to ourselves to go to gain that clarity and 
this world is so rushed. And one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give people is to slow down. The first thing I do when I work with clients is request 10 minute alone time for them every morning. Just 10 minutes for them by themselves to start quieting their mind, to start listening. Because we have a a very intuitive intuition that talks to us and tells us, uh, you know, hindsight's 2020. Oh, I knew I should have done this, but instead I chose to do that, right? So when we listen to ourselves and we really understand what it is that's nudging at us, that we know is on our heart, that we know we want to do. But as Mel Robbins would say, in five seconds, we tend to talk ourselves out of it, right? We, do, we want to listen to what our, our spirit or what our intuition or whatever you would call it is trying to tell you because it's always right. And we tend to want to fight against that and go upstream a lot and uh, look for validation on why that's the right choice of something you should do when your intuition is always right. So that's something that takes a little bit of work and practice daily to do. And really the second piece on that is gratitude. When you're not focused on things in your past. So if someone's depressed, it's focusing on the past. If someone has anxiety, they're focused on the future. This is something I'm sure is very basic that you know. And so we tend to to not be able to be in the present. You know, social media and we look at everyone else's photos, we want to live their life. We want to we want to be something different. And um when when we are just enough exactly where we are. And I think where people miss the point is I have to make a certain amount of money. I have to have a certain amount of friends. I have to have a certain job. I have to produce a certain amount every single day to be worth something, but your worth and you're enough just being who you are. You don't, you know, and and I think that's what puts pressure on us in society so much, especially women who aren't able to have children. They pressure that they need to be a mother or if they choose not to have children, you know, that's their choice. They shouldn't be looked at based on what the um, average is or what society is saying is or isn't. And I think we tend to uh, not want to stand out, right? We want to blend in so we're not noticed. But just as our unique fingerprint is different than anybody else's in the world, we're built to stand out, to do things our way, to be different. And uh, that's what excites me because I know that when I talk to women and when, when we have these conversations, you can see their brains just just going because they're already going inside themselves knowing, yeah, I know I like to do this. But especially as mothers, Bernardo, I have to say, when we get married, we take on a different identity. Um, we take on someone else's last name. When we become a mother, we take on that role of being a mother. So we have so many identities. It's so hard to even keep ourselves in the forefront. I remember um, when my kids grew up and moved out, I legit didn't even remember what kind of food I like to eat, where I like to shop or what color I liked. Cause it was really everything about whatever my kids wanted. I would shop where they wanted and do the hobbies that they wanted to do. And it was always about them. So, um, you know, as I got older and really finding myself and realizing what it is that our purpose is and, and how you can confidently show up in the world just as you and knowing that that's enough, that it's, it just changes your life. Well, there's a couple of very interesting things I, I like. Obviously, the, the idea of slowing down, of, of of appreciating, you know, gratitude, of of understanding kind of where we are, and uh, and also quite rightly, I, I do believe, you know, especially with now social media, phones, and and kind of like you know Instagram, and how many people have liked my my picture, and and you know, kind of some of the stats are ridiculous, aren't they? You know, we spend 25 years watching television, seven years. Sorry, 25 years sleeping, seven years watching television, four years on social media, you know, and we spend an average of four hours a day. This is this is kind of scary. And we and we probably don't spend, as you said, we, we definitely don't spend. A lot of people don't, or well, some people do, who meditate, and people who spend more time on their own, but, but a lot of times we don't just slow down, stop, 
and listen to our internal dialogue and also just to simply appreciate what we have. And, and I, think, I think it is that. I think sometimes, you know, people might not realize that they're actually happy, you know, that, that they might be happy or, or, or you know, it, knowing that you've got a couple of healthy kids and you've got a house and you've got your phone and you, and, and you, go, you can go on holidays. These are amazing things that sometimes we just don't take for granted, do we? And so I, I suppose what I was trying to come to that love starts with yourself, isn't it? Love, love is, is the key word and it's something that I, I believe is, is, is missing or we're missing the point sometimes, but it starts with loving ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, it really does. And, you know, I started Gratitudes uh, quite, you know, some time ago. And it really does just give you a different perspective every day when you start your morning, just listing gratitudes of things in your life that you're thankful for. We forget the simple things like electricity and hot water and just the basics that we enjoy in, you know, in America where I am in Arizona you know, these are things that come very easily. And there are families, even in America, and I'm not talking third world countries or areas where there's extreme poverty, where they don't have hot water, they don't have electricity or warmth. And, um, you know, they they can't just run to the grocery store and grab the groceries that they need and come home and cook them and run their you know, fruits and vegetables underwater and boil them where we have these extreme luxuries um, that, that we don't even look at every day as being thankful for, or that we even woke up and we can breathe or that we can walk if we can walk. You know, um, I had a brother-in-law who got in a, a really bad motorcycle accident who's now uh, paraplegic in a wheelchair. And I'm sure leading up to that, he wasn't stating gratitudes every day of how grateful he is that he could just walk somewhere. And so there's these small things and pieces in our lives that we get so caught up with what we don't have that we don't ever focus or, and I'm not going to say we don't ever focus, but the one holiday a year, Thanksgiving in America, where we focus on being thankful now is just overlooked. We go from Halloween and then everything comes down in the store and everything goes up for Christmas and Thanksgiving's just in the middle and it's just a day to eat with family. But I remember back in the day as I was a kid, it was a big deal to have Thanksgiving and family getting together. And and I, I wish it was, was celebrated more uh, and that we were a society where we were, were kinder and gentler to other people. And it really starts with yourself because if you're angry with yourself, if you can't forgive yourself, if you have guilt, if you um, don't love yourself, how can you possibly appreciate or love anyone else? And that was just a brilliant, I love that you said, you know, our internal dialogue and self-love because it really starts with us. Uh, Michael Jackson said it brilliantly, right? You want to change the world? Look in the mirror. Start with that person. Yeah, and, and I think I think I mean for me, you know, having having done well quite a few events and and, and worked with so many great people and and, and see seen so many you know inspiring people out there. And I, I've come down to, to kind of the the essentials and, and the basics of it all, and and kind of that's why for me, you know, um, for me, what I'm doing with a lot of the stuff related to the Legacy Club which is, a, is about helping people understand, you know, what, what are you leaving behind? Uh, you know, what, what, what are you going to find a leave behind? And, and it comes down to the thing that, that why I really believe in is that, you know, anything and everything that we do, if you're a speaker, if you're a coach, if you're a trainer, if you're a therapist, or if you're a person that loves tech talks and read books and, and attends courses and seminars, it's all because we want to become the best version of ourselves. But how much time do we actually spend, you know, actually really focusing on that? But it is down to mortality, you know, and, 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 and this, is not, this is not about being morbid. This is simply being realistic. It's only when, you know, you're just talking about your brother-in-law. Well, look, it was a life or death situation. Well, you know, he unfortunately now is living a completely different life. And, and would he be grateful before? Well, of course he wouldn't. But, you know, kind of when, when you have a loved one that all of a sudden is – you know, has, has cancer or, or, or you have the bad news and all of a sudden your priorities change instantly. And I'm asked, and, I'm, and I always say, well, why, why do we have to wait for these turning points? You know, <clears throat> why do we have to wait for these turning points in our lives? And why don't we just take action now? So I, I, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in, in the whole idea around love and sharing love and, and, and people appreciating what they have. 
Um, so what's what's what do you think is 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 missing in 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 a part? So, so we've discussed obviously the idea around social media. We've discussed about social media. We've discussed about obviously how ungrateful we are that we don't spend enough time being grateful with what we have. Um, we're dictated uh, by you know what's happening out there instead of focusing on ourselves and, and spending a bit more time with ourselves. What, what, what do you think is is the solution, and how are we going to start making things? change because i believe that you know you personally uh, and, and a lot of other people out there you're out there because you're extremely passionate about helping other people about them living a fulfilled life what's next how can we get the attention of people so they start living a more fulfilled life how can we do this to find out more about our latest projects get a free coaching lesson or download my book go to www.bernardo-moya.com I think it starts with awareness, honestly, Bernardo. Um, It starts with just being aware. So it's just getting the message out there. So people that are aware and they stop and take a look in the mirror and say, huh, I don't know. I've, I've had so many decades in my life where I didn't slow down enough to even... It wasn't until I started traveling immensely that I was by myself a lot. And I realized like do I even like who I am? And the answer was no, I didn't like who I was. So I said, what are you going to do to change it? So I think it's, it's that constant, you know, go, go, go. And, 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 and the pressures of, of everything out there. And it's all about awareness. Once the message is out there and you hear it, and you hear it again, and you hear it another time, and we've touched you eight, nine, 10, 11 times, and you're like, finally, I get to the point where I look in the mirror, or I sit for a minute and think, hmm, what do I like? Because, you know, we have to produce, we just have to be busy constantly to sit and do nothing uh, isn't, isn't, uh, I guess, accepted, uh, because that you're not, you're not, you're not moving things forward. But in actuality, I think the more that we, that we go back inside and have our internal dialogue, as you talked about, and we have that dialogue, I think it starts a with awareness for us being able to listen and have an internal dialogue with ourselves and then be accepting who we are, exactly who we are today and understanding that we have built, this is where, this is where, um, it shocks a lot of people. And I'm sure you've had these conversations. Your life is exactly what you built. You built everything around you exactly the way it is, exactly what you've wanted your entire life. This is it. Because if you wanted something different, you would have built something different. It really is when we think about everything we have around us, our words that we say, uh, it's just becoming more aware. It always starts with awareness. Once you have the awareness and you're understanding and listening to the words that you're saying, you're listening internally to the dialogues, you're listening to your instincts and your intuition. Once we start doing these things, then we can start changing um, our behaviors which then eventually those behaviors become habits. And then we just don't know how to do it any other way because we're doing it every day. So for you, I'm assuming it's not hard for you to love somebody because you're filled with love. You want love for other people. That's why you have these amazing expos called the best you expo for people to go and be their best version of themselves. Cause we have several different versions So which version do you want to be? And I always say, when you get to the end of your life, well, what regrets do you want to have? I don't want to have any. And I I know that I'm never going to say, oh, I wish I would have worked harder or I wish I would have, you know, so I think about that every day. What would I, what would I wish I would have done more of? And then I say, do it today. Do it now. Why are you waiting? There's always excuses. You get a flood of excuses of why, but really why are you waiting? If you want to go on a vacation, why haven't you gone? What's the number one thing you think everyone always says? I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Well, if you wanted to really go, if you really wanted to do something, you would find the time and you would find the money. So it's not that important to you, right? 
It is, and and I, and I think kind of one of the things that that was in your in your bio, you were talking about uh, people showing up. I'm, I'm I'm look, I'm 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 about love, and I believe that kind of like you know love goes a long way. But but I'm also about tough love. I I, I think that there's a lot of what we call in the U, in the in English like pussyfooting around with kind of like. Yes. You know, so I, I, I'm all up for that. But what I'm saying is, is that I just believe that as you quite point you uh, pointed out, you know, is, is the the fact of being aware. But it's just people, you know, that don't show up. Um, and the reason they don't show up, and, and that's half the battle, is is that kind of if you don't show up, you know, no one's going to come to the rescue. So you know, if you if you want to if you want to go out there, and I think I think that the, there is that sense. I think it, I think, that, and I talk about this in my book about no one coming to the rescue is because I believe we always have we have this this instinct of being little kids, little children, where we think someone's going to come and 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 rescue us and give us everything we need and and provide us with all the answers and give us the ideal paycheck or or the great job. Or the amazing book deal and it doesn't work that way does it you you just got to do a lot of hard work Mm -hmm. you do you do and you know again we're guided we are guided so if we listen to ourselves and we listen to our instincts and our intuition we are guided to where it is that we need to go to do things so I don't think that the load has to necessarily be a heavy load I do believe that there's opportunity for us to be able to utilize the resources of others, you know, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Ask for help uh, when you need the help. Uh, I, I'm a sponge when it comes to resources and information that somebody else can teach us. I always use the phrase, if learning is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. You can never be a great leader if you're not willing to consistently learn And that's the other thing. If I were to step out and say, oh, no, Bernardo, I'm not familiar with that or I don't know that, then culture or society would tell you that she's not as smart. Right. So people are afraid to really come out and just say, I don't know something. I need help with something because they're afraid of being judged. And that is, that's where I, I sit in that non-judgment zone. Whenever I'm around someone, I truly love them and see them for them completely to their soul. The outside of what they look like doesn't matter to me. Um, what status they have. I don't believe a title on a business card give you any type of status. Um, it really is just about who you are as a person And that's what makes you so unique and so freaking awesome. And it just starts with awareness. That's it. It's just, it starts with awareness. And then how do you want to live your life without, you know, lead it without asking anyone else's permission because no one's coming to give you, like you said, to save you. No one's coming to give you permission to live your life. You have to give yourself the permission, you know? No, and I, and I think is what you pointed out is is the idea of 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 non um, you know people being scared of being judged and not and not asking for help. I think that's half mm-hmm. half the battle. Uh, so look, what I wanted to ask you is obviously you're going to be at the at the expo, and yeah. it's a, delighted to have you there. And uh, it's 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 a big gathering of of amazing energetic individuals. Uh, are there either sharing uh, some great ideas and and trying to inspire others and, and those that are looking like, you know, kind of sponges. And I, I love it because kind of when, when people come to these events, they're, they're like, you know, they're just like, they're walking around. There's, <laughs> there's like nine or 10 breakout rooms and there's speakers going on everywhere. Where shall I go? Where shall I go? Yeah. But, but you, you can feel this amazing positive energy. What are you going to be sharing with us at the expo and, uh, and why should people uh, attend to something like this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the message about how you show up. So a lot of what we talked about today, I want, I want everyone there to, like I said, I'm on this earth to spread the message, to gather women, to help them believe in themselves so that they can lead their best life. And that's why I love the name of this expo. It's the best you expo. And that's what I stand for. You know, lead your best life, be the best version of you that you could possibly be. So my message to every woman um, that's going to be in the room where I'm speaking is really giving her basic steps about how she can take small little steps like we talked about, just started with awareness, taking these small steps that can become um, behaviors, that become habits, so that you can change your life. Because you, you do not have to lead the life you're leading today. Um, you can lead the life that you were meant to lead. Um, 
And that's the message I'm here to, I'm here to share because I want everyone to, to feel joy and happiness and turn the handle and walk out of the cage that they put themselves in, like step into the light and get out of the shadows. Don't fit in anymore. It's time to stand out and be your best version of you. Brilliant. Well, I'm very excited. Uh, looking forward to have you there. It's going to be an amazing two days. And um, Great. any any final any final uh, things you would like to share with us? Oh, First sorry. Apart, all, apart right? from the fact of where they can find you, please <laughs> share with me kind of any any final ideas you've got. I just wanted to thank you um, for starting this. I I didn't know anything about this. I was introduced from a few friends. And I love that there are so many people in the world that also love others and are really trying to help others. You know, you're lifting others up um, um, selfishly or unselfishly, genuinely from your core. You just want to lift others and help them succeed in life. And so thank you. Thank you for doing that and putting this together and all of your efforts and the books that you write and the messages that you send to people. I'm, I'm very thankful to be able to be on the show with you. And I'm also thankful that I woke up and I also want to lift other people and help women. And uh, for anyone out there who's contemplating if they should attend, the answer is yes. Uh, it is a small investment of time in your life for you to be surrounded by this vibration and be in the room with these energies and all of the people that are going to be there. I've interviewed several of them already, talked to so many women already that are going to be there. It's going to be an incredible event. The vibrations are out of this world of how high they are. And we need to surround ourselves with people that can help lift us. So if anyone's thinking, What, you know, I'm stuck in my life. We're always kind of feeling stuck. Get yourself around people with a higher vibration. Get yourself around people with this energy because they will help get you unstuck. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I do. I mean, one of the things that we do in the Legacy Club and, and I, one of my anchors is, is I, I always say everything that I do, everything we do, we do from a place of love. And I always use, I use my hat like that, from a place of love. <laughs> but when, I, when I'm going into a room, I just go like, like that and all my guys go from love. So everything we do at The Best You and, and what we do there is we do from a place of love. My experience is, is that, um, you know, what, what happens First of all, and this is kind of me where I'm at now, my 50-something, 50 55, and, uh, and kind of I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years. I've been promoting for a long time. But, but And I'm not saying it's recently because it's been quite, for quite a few years now, but I've always been a great believer in serendipity. But what, what I'm a great believer now in is, is, in, is in opening my senses, completely opening my senses to see why things happen, to, 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 to really try and understand why is this book – being recommended? Why has someone talked about this TED Talk? Why why has this person come into my life right now? And it's when you open your senses, all of a sudden, amazing opportunities start materializing. That's what happens at an event like ours, whereby someone might come to see someone else, and all of a sudden, they might bump into you, and all of a sudden, you know, their life has changed because you've said something, because you've helped them. That happens in, in a massive scale. So, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in, in the vibration and, and being open to these senses. And, but, again, I want to thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for being there. How can people find you? How can they find me? So my contact information um, is leadupforwomen.com. That's the company that um, I run and own, and we're an all-women organization. And anyone who is looking for additional information can go there, or they can email us at info at leadupforwomen.com. We're on Facebook, social media, Instagram, all of them, leadupforwomen.com. It's really easy, Lead Up for Women. That's where you can find us. Perfect. Thank you so much. And for all of those that basically, Colleen's going to be at the Best You Expo. Uh, I am. Her talk will be recorded, so it'll be out there on the platform as well. It'll be a podcast, and you've got all our information. So thank you so much for being here. I'm thank very you. thankful and can't wait to meet you in, in LA. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. Take care. Thank well, thank you, so- <laughs> thank you so much. For more information, go to www.thebestyou.co.